Hi there, my name is Darren Simpson. I'm an author and I write slightly darker fiction for older children and teens. And so far I've written these books, Scavengers, The Memory Thieves, and Hot Off the Press. Furthermore, but today I'm here to talk to you about this book, The Memory Thieves, because in honour of World Book Day, I'm going to give you a reading from this book and set you a fun writing activity if you want to have a go, okay? So before the reading, I'd better give you an idea of what this book is about, okay? It's mainly about this place here called the Elsewhere Sanctuary, which is on this island where the tides have gone away and never come back, leaving rusting boats and whale bones exposed, okay? And this is a very high-tech facility where children like Cyan and Ruby here have gone to have all their bad memories removed, okay? So basically they don't remember anything about their old lives, they're getting this special treatment from the doctor and the staff there, uh, and even their names they have been forgotten, they're all named after colours instead, okay? And it seems quite nice, they've got no worries, they've got no bad memories, they ride around the dunes on quad bikes, they explore shipwrecks and caves and things, so it seems quite nice, but one day Cyan here finds a warning carved into some whale bones, a warning that suggests that something more underhand is going on at the Elsewhere Sanctuary. And on top of that, a new resident arrives, a girl called Jonquil. And Jonquil starts to resist the Sanctuary's treatment. And um, the staff there and the doctor start to get a bit more forceful. And um, this all starts to give Cyan a very uncomfortable feeling about the Sanctuary. And this book is about Cyan's secret mission to find out what's really going on at the Sanctuary and to find out the truth about himself, okay? Now, in the reading I'm gonna give you here, Cyan is giving the new girl, Jonquil, a tour of the Sanctuary. And the Sanctuary has many things that help um, residents lose their memories. There's special strobe treatment, there's medication, there are uh, clots without hands. But most importantly, um, the, the building shuffles its rooms regularly to disorientate the uh, people who live there, to um, leave the children sort of, make, it makes it harder for them to kind of regain their memories. It keeps them disorientated, okay? And in this scene, John Court is about to explore, experience her first shuffle, okay? The staff at the sanctuary call it reconfiguration when the building does this, but the children there all call it the shuffle. Okay, bear with me. Right. After passing the oak walls that hid the engine floor from the stairway, Cyan hopped off the top step and hit the carpet of the upper room's first floor. John Quill was waiting for him in a wide hallway, a cube-shaped space with dark wood-panelled walls. She turned to take in its thick rugs and the colourful fish paintings on the walls, then looked at the doors facing each other from the room's opposite ends. Each one of them had a small porthole window. So I'm just going anywhere. Anywhere, said Cyan. Make snow, and she was off again. Cyan trailed behind while Jonquil raced through hallways and up and down spiral staircases. Other res residents sometimes had to hop aside, so they bumped against tall plants and bronze lamps. Slow down, panted Cyan. Man alive, you're really fast. Jonquil showed no sign of slowing. Thanks, I used to be a... Don't say more. Sorry, but seriously, slow down. I need to show, need to show you something. Jonquil stopped and Cyan stumbled into her. He stooped for some moments with his hands on his knees so that his white fringe hung over his face. After getting his breath back, he straightened and patted his, patted his chest. Right, okay, while you were running... Did you hear your locket beeping three separate times? Yeah, there was one just now. That's the countdown. Five minutes left until the shuffle starts. Notice anything about the hallways and staircases you've been whizzing around? And the bedrooms you've seen through the open doors? Anything they've all got in common? Jonquil studied the hallway they are in. The walls are all wooden, and they all have the same shape, like big cubes. That's right, the rooms are all cubes. That's how it works, how the upper rooms move. What? You've seen those puzzles, right? The flat ones where you have to slide plastic tiles around to make a picture. John Quill eyed Cyan cynically. Yeah, I know the ones. Cyan used his finger to make a square shape. Now imagine one of those puzzles, but in 3D. What would those moving tiles be in 3D? I guess, cubes? Bullseye. And that's how these bedrooms and hallways move around, like cubes in a giant sliding puzzle. John Quill's eyes searched the walls. I don't believe you. Cyan laughed and carried on. And those cubes need a grid to move around in, right? That's what this is part of. His finger 
traced the room's broad ebony trim, which skirted the twelve edges of the floor, ceiling and walls. This border is part of the upper room's framework, the huge grid that holds all the cubes in place. It also lets the walls slide in all directions, while the rooms, their floors and ceilings and whatever's in them, go wherever they're sent. So during a shuffle, there's stuff moving all over the place, but the framework stays put. That's why it's the safest place to be. So basically, if your locket tells you a shuffle's coming and you're up here, you need to get safely into the frame before it all kicks off. Here, sign pointed at the hollows in each vertical section of the room's frame. These are called snugs, okay? They're for residents and staff during shuffles. Both of their, both of their lockets were beeping regularly now. Quick, get into one. Jonquil shook her head. This is ridiculous. You're having me on. Even so, and with a look of mounting worry on her face, Jonquil reversed cautiously into one of the snugs. Sion tucked himself into the opposite snug and gave her two thumbs up. There's nothing to worry about, Jonquil. You're perfectly safe as long as you stay in your snug. Have you noticed the beeping's getting faster? Jonquil was as pale as she'd been before her hot chocolate. She nodded wordlessly. And you feel that faint trembling? Sion had to raise his voice while the noise grew louder. He could hear it travelling up from the engine floor, reverberating through the framework, the gnash of cogs and the squeal of pulleys. Sion's heartbeat quickened. A laugh began to rise in his throat, but when it failed to reach his mouth, he frowned. Something was sucking the joy out of this shuffle. He pouted slightly, suddenly deep in thought. When he realised it was the message he'd found on the whale bones, that those words were still niggling him more than he'd like to admit, his frown deepened. Jonquil shrieked across the din. What is it? Her eyes darted nervously left and right. Is something wrong? Sion pushed the thought aside. The walls thrummed and trembled around them, and he forced a giddy cackle through his lips. It's all great, he shouted. Just stay put till it's over. Here it comes. The floor beyond the frame's edge fell away, followed swiftly by the room's descending ceiling. Sion caught sight of Jonquil's widening eyes before a wall slid along the frame's grooves to block his view. When it was gone, he managed to shout a quick, It's okay! before another wall shot up from below. Wooden walls, many of them with doors, flew by with increasing speed, from top to bottom and bottom to top, left to right and right to left. Sion saw staircases, bedrooms and hallways, all coasting through the space within the cube-shaped frame, most of them on the cusp of collision with sliding walls. On it went with a thunderous rumble, with an exhilarating grind and relentless squeal, and with every passing room, Sion glimpsed floors and ceilings, wardrobes and beds, beanbags and tables, mirrors and shelves, quaking plants and nodding lamps, fat bright cushions and vivid fluffy rugs, on and on, lurching and sliding, until the movements began to slow. The noise gradually fell in volume, and when everything finally slotted back into place, Sion and Jonquil found themselves looking into a new hallway, a new hallway with a spiral staircase in its centre. Okay, so I hope that gives you a taste of what the shuffle is like in the Elsewhere Sanctuary. And your writing activity now is to write a scene in which there's a shuffle in the school, okay, based around the very classroom you're in. So what I like to do is imagine, um, like what you just read, what, like in the reading I just gave, imagine that all the rooms around you in the school start to move around, okay? And I want, to write, want you to write an exciting scene where you have to escape this uh, this school while it's all shifting around you, okay? And I've got some tips to help you do this, okay? So um, let's have a look. First tip, um, an obvious starting point, look around you and maybe draw a rough map, okay? Think about the rooms that are above the room you're in, maybe below if you're upstairs, think about the rooms to all the sides and sketch a map to help you imagine what where the rooms might move to, okay? Which rooms you might be jumping through on the way out, okay? So a little map might help you out. Then, think about the build-up, okay? I hope you got a sense from that reading about the fact that I didn't just make the shuffle in the sanctuary just start happening straight away. There was a slow build-up, wasn't there, with the noise increasing and the feeling of the trembling through the building. So don't just instantly go into your shuffle. Make a little bit of build-up to uh, increase the tension for the reader. Next tip, and this is something I use for all scenes, think about feelings and senses, okay? Think about how you are feeling when this starts to happen. Think about how your body is responding. Think about, is your heart racing? Are your uh, muscles aching? Think, about, are you excited? Are you scared? Are you a bit of both? Think about these things and put them across so the reader can relate to them and uh, be with you in the story, okay? 
Next, they think about the sounds. What does the shuffle sound like? Is it very noisy? Is it smooth and well oiled around you? And think about、um, what noise the pupils around you are making. Are they screaming? Are they excited? Or you could just simplify it and make it just you escaping if you like. If that makes things a bit easier.、Uh, my next tip is to think carefully about rooms and objects and some dodging. Okay, because when you go jump into a, another moving room next to you. What's in there? What do you have to jump over? Do you have to jump over any cabinets? Slide under tables? Give it some close calls. Make it a bit dangerous with some excitement. Okay.、Um, and then、um, think about、um, what happens after you escape. Okay. Do you end up in the playground? In the field? Think about the relief you feel when you get there. Okay.、Um, and again, try and make the reader relate to those feelings.、Uh, talk about you know what you can smell, what you can feel, what you can hear and see. Okay, put the reader in your position,、uh, and finally, this shuffling school that you've created. How does it look from the outside when you see it all happening from the outside?、Um, make it a spectacle. Readers love a spectacle, or at least as a writer, I love writing a big spectacle. So try and describe what these shifting rooms, this changing school, looks like from the outside. Okay, it's a chance for you to subvert and play around with the reality of your school. Okay, so have lots of fun with it. Uh, and talking of fun, that's it. That's all that's left for you to do now, just to have a go at this and have fun.、Um, those are the tips.、Um, yeah, explore your creativity.、Um, just go for it and enjoy yourself. And、um, yeah, that's that's all there is to it. Basically, it's all about having a good time. This writing exercise. So I'll leave you be. I wish you all a great、um, World Book Week, and、um, I wish you good luck. And I'll see you around. Okay, bye.